Hello, Oscillate Sync here. My channel is probably best known for talking about synths on a very technical level, very quietly for too long, and also posting unpopular ambient and drone tracks. Uh, but for a while, I've been thinking about um, trying to put out other content, which is uh, maybe not so technical and a little bit more about the vibes or the music or something. And so I thought as an experiment uh, for this, uh, perhaps I should do something that is algorithmically uh, optimized uh, and put out a tier list, but at the same time try and make it niche so that not many people watch the video uh, by making it about ranking the synths that I own uh, for their ability or my preference for their ability to do ambient and drone music. So that's what we're going to do uh, today and hopefully have some chill ambient music in the background while we do it. There are three main areas that I'm going to think about when it comes to ranking these different synths. The first obviously is going to be sound or maybe rather the sound engine. So um, the pure sound of the instrument of course, but also how you can um, bend and move that sound to make it appropriate for uh, ambient and drone music, particularly how we can modulate things and keep things moving. My preference when it comes to that kind of music tends to be towards sort of um, more lo-fi or dirty or um, modulated sounds. So that will be a, a personal preference as we look at that. The second area will be more around uh, what it's like to perform with the synths. So most of the ambient or drone music that I make tends to be at some level a live performance so how an instrument feels to perform with is really really important now that can be quite varied so it could be that something has a really really powerful sequencer that makes it particularly good at um, manipulating the sounds and moving the performance around in a generative way it could be that it has a particularly inspiring playing surface one way or another or you know some synths just have keyboards, lots of synths just have keyboards, and that's maybe not as interesting, but paired with the right sound synthesis uh, engine uh, can be still very, very compelling. The third uh, area that we'll be thinking about when it comes to uh, ranking these synths is just vibe. There are some instruments that on a uh, build quality or an aesthetic or just the way that they interact with the performance, there's a vibe to them which makes me prefer them. So that's probably going to be the area that's hardest to explain <laughs> when we are ranking these synths and probably the place where people are going to disagree with me the most, I suspect as well. But there we go. This is my list and my preferences and it's all uh, subjective. I am certain that there are going to be synths you disagree with uh, my rankings for um, and if they are then please let me know in the comments and I will try and defend my position where I can or you know maybe it's indefensible. So over here in this box, I've got some slightly misshapen uh, images of most of the synths that I own currently or have owned up until recently in some cases. Um, and maybe we'll just shuffle them and choose which one we're going to start with. And by shuffle, I mean I'm just going to wiggle the mouse up and down. So where are we going to start? Okay, let's start, let's start here uh, with the Korg monologue. So the Korg monologue obviously is a monosynth, which in some cases is going to restrict its uh, use for certain types of ambient music, but certainly having one note at a time is absolutely fine for drone music. The thing with the monologue uh, is that it's somewhat limited when it comes to creating movement within the patches, uh, because you've only got the one LFO, you've only got the one fairly limited uh, envelope generator as well. So any movement that you're going to build into the performance has to be done via the uh, sequencer. But then that then locks you down to something which is obviously uh, repeating. The other thing, I guess, is that the sound of the monologue is very particular and works well for certain things. But in terms of getting grit into it, I actually don't like the distortion sound that it has for for drone type stuff. It, it tends to fizz out a bit. Some people really like the distortion on the monologue, but it's it's always been a, a weak point for me. The, the distortion I really like on a Korg product actually is uh, on the Volker kick. The distortion on that thing is amazing. And if they put that in the monologue, perhaps uh, that would be the thing. So 
for this particular area of music and, and for my taste this is going to have to go into the C tier I think so uh, what's next little shuffle again um, okay well we've landed it with some more cork since so maybe we'll continue down the same road here uh, with the mirror lock now the mirror lock is a slightly different proposition to the monologue in many ways and I think the thing that's most different with the mini log is that it inherently has a more textured and gritty sound uh, because of the cross mod because of the filter design and because especially because of the way that the delay operates there's a lot that it can do to get movement uh, within a single note via all of those different areas and using the delay to introduce um, either repeats of those modulations and noise, it has to be said, but noise isn't always unwelcome. Yeah, it, it actually offers quite a lot more, leaving aside the fact, of course, that it's also polyphonic, which is going to help in a number of circumstances. The sequencer is still really, really uh, limited, more so than on the um, monologue. And... The key bed isn't the nicest in the world. I don't mind mini keys. It's not the mini keys bit that bothers me with the mini log, but it's not the most inspiring keyboard to, to play on it. it. It has to be said. But with all of that, yeah, it, it's got to go higher than the, the monologue um, just because of the, the dirtiness, I guess. Uh, so that's going to go B tier. Um, yeah. So a little shuffle. Let's have a look. <laughs> we seem to be landing on a lot of cork synths. Let's take the op six. So the op six is one of my all-time synths um, for sound design. I love this thing. Um, when you stop thinking about it like uh, an FM synth and start thinking about it as a small modular system with all of those different operator types available to you and ways you can route them back into themselves for feedback, just you can do such amazing things with it. And I, I, I've said this for years. I think Korg really undersold the Op6 by talking about it as being uh, uh, an FM synth primarily. And I, I get that that legacy relating it to things like the DX7 is is powerful marketing, but it's so much more than that. It's one of my favorite synths for creating soundscapes. You've got a mod matrix, which is fairly extensive. Each mod slot in the mod matrix allows you to scale the modulation via another modulation source, which is huge. It expands what you can do there um, quite massively. It has uh, th multiple modulators, uh, three uh, envelopes and three uh, LFOs. I, I do wish that the envelopes were a little bit more powerful. So on the Modway, for example, you had a lot more power with the envelopes in terms of re-triggering and stuff. So it's definitely some things that would make it even more compelling. The effects on it are really, really good. It's in stereo and you have panning per voice and you have multiple, multiple voices. And although it's mono timbral, you can create patches which essentially have entirely discrete sounds within them, either through keyboard sl splits or even just per note because of using various modulation in there. Yeah, if we need to talk about some downsides, I think to be balanced, you probably should. The key bed is fine, but it's not inspiring. It desperately would have benefited from aftertouch on the keyboard for the types of sounds that it's good at for sure. Um, the sequencer is fine. It's the same sequencer that you find on a lot of the core pro products fundamentally. It's not as powerful as some, but it's also a lot more powerful than, say, uh, the mini logs. But anyway, uh, this is easy S tier. Easy peasy. Um, just don't even have to think about it. So, I mean, while we're here, we may as well look at its uh, cousin here, which is the mod wave. Uh, I don't have the mod wave anymore. That was a loner from uh, from Korg, so that's gone back now. Um, but I did use it fairly extensively and uh, dig into it in quite a lot of depth. And the mod wave is a very, very interesting machine. 
but for me a lot of the interest of it sits within the mod part as in the way that its modulation is set up so you have many many lfos you have many many envelopes and those envelopes are very very flexible in terms of the way that you can trigger them and re-trigger them with other mod sources i love that on any synth any synth where you can trigger a uh, an envelope using something else whether it's the crossing of a threshold of another modulation source or whether it's the end of cycle on an lfo or anything like that just expands the usefulness and uh, creativity available for um, those envelopes um, it also has a functionally infinite mod matrix you can modulate things with other things you don't have a limited number of slots you still have that level scaling that the op6 has which i really really like too and of course you've got the chaos pad stuff with all of the um, physics tricks that you can do there as a alternative more interesting lfo or envelope shape now having said all of that i never found the synthesis part of the mod wave as interesting as say the op6 not even close really um i don't know whether it's because i just don't find wavetables as interesting and, and there's definitely things you can do that allow you to evolve the sound like massively but i always found it just slightly limiting compared to the options you had for the modulation now if you took the modulation stuff and tacked it on to the op sixes synthesis engine you would have the ultimate synth as far as i'm concerned but i just never found the actual synthesis part of the mod wave that interesting the other part of the mod wave that i did find interesting however is the sequencer which is not really a sequencer in the conventional sense at all and i did a whole series of videos about the sequencer on the mod wave and uh yeah that's another area where it comes to creating generative patterns particularly the mod wave is really really strong and again, what I really want is for that to be on the OP6. <laughs> Basically, I want all the mod part of the mod wave on the OP6. That's what I want, Cork, please. Um, there's one other thing that I have to say about the mod wave, and this comes down to a vibe bit. In terms of its user interface compared to the OP6, it's just not as nice to use. It looks on the surface with the mod wave that there are many, many more controls, sort of more knob per function stuff than the OP6, which is true. Uh, that there are more knobs per function, except a lot of those functions are um, hidden behind switches and toggles. And then a whole host of parameters, or the interesting parameters, are all modified by using a single edit knob. And it was just a little bit tiring to use compared to the op6 which borrows heavily from kind of the electron uh, layout of pages and a single interface which is just generally a much nicer interface to use even though there are fewer knobs on there so it loses a point for vibe now does that put it into b tier i think it does i think the the limitations of the sound engine for me um and its user interface again it's going to be top of b tier if i'm allowed to do that am i allowed to move these around yeah cool it's top of b tier but it is b tier i think okay another little shuffle da -da 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 -da. uh okay let's choose something that's not cork let's go with yeah, let's go with the mini brute 2s so mini brute 2s it's a mono synth has two oscillators two lfos uh, two envelopes, one which can cycle as well. Well, both of them can cycle, actually, um, if you patch them appropriately. And, of course, it's semi-modular, which allows you to patch it to do other things. It has an inherently very dirty sound, uh, which I like. Um, I think the brute factor is a lovely thing to have, and given that it's essentially just a feedback loop, more synths should have something along those lines. Uh, and certainly on the S2 and the Mini Brute 2, uh, as well they've refined the sound and the way that the synth operates it was a really good follow-up to the original mini brute um both of them were the sequencer on the mini brute 2s is also brilliant um the fact that you can have envelopes and lfos per step and straight voltage sequencing per step all of that stuff makes for a really really interesting sequencer 
environment. And you can um, mess with the sequencer more directly as well. A lot of people overlook this. One criticism that I've seen of the Mini Brute sequencer is that it doesn't run slow enough, but if you clock it with an LFO, it can run as slow as you want. So often um, in the music that I make with the Mini Brute, I will clock the uh, sequencer with the LFO, which gives me much wider range and control over the speed of the sequence, which can make for really interesting sequences that sort of evolve into arpeggios and stuff. That raw sound of it is very compelling. The way that the oscillators can interface and interact with each other through the various different mod patches for the different waveforms. Yeah, um, I like it a lot actually for, for drones. Uh, stick a reverb or a delay at the end of it and you're set uh, for a wide range of both sort of um, traditional synthy drones but also very experimental west coast kind of drones as well. I would like it more if it had one more LFO perhaps or maybe not one more LFO but one more um, dedicated source of randomness uh, that would just expand the things you could do with it. There's also certain things that are missing from the patch bay which has always bugged me but they're never like really really big deals. Does this put it into A tier? Hmm it's either top of B tier or it's A tier. I'm gonna put it does it go above mod wave? I think it does. So I think this goes above mod wave, I think because of the vibe rule here. Um, it might even be A. It might move up to A. It might move up to A later. Okay, let's uh, move on. Okay, yeah, so this is uh, an interesting one, I think. So uh, let's do the two styler phones, because this is going to be somewhat contentious. Uh, I think so uh, the Gen X one is a really basic synth you play it with a stylus or um, you can use the, the ribbon controller for it. it has a single oscillator it has a very uh, limited LFO it has a very very limited envelope uh, and it has a very very noisy delay and a fairly aggressive sounding filter I'm tempted to put this in A tier, but I can't put it above the, <laughs> I can't possibly put it above the, the Mini Brute. The raw sound of this synth is glorious. There is something about the way that this oscillator is made, how unstable it is, how noisy the delay is, how aggressive and characterful and resonant the, the filter is. It, for drones, it is absolutely glorious. You've also got the sub oscillators for adding additional weight. You have the uh, sort of cross mod in there for adding additional movement into the sound. So it actually has quite a lot of movement uh, within a single note, partially because of the instability of the oscillators. It's constantly burbling and because uh, you're not making perfect contact with the stylus a lot of the time. It's just this beautiful sound and you pair it with say a looper or a long delay for sort of drone leads or for just a single droning note underneath something. I really, really like it. I think it's an incredibly underrated synth for that kind of music. Now, is it a pain that you have to hold down the stylus on the note to keep the note playing? Of course. Uh, so uh, if we could perhaps I'll try and mod it to have a crocodile clip instead, if there's a way of doing that, just a way of holding down uh, one of those single notes. But yeah, I think it's great. It can't possibly go above the Mini Brute. Is the Stylophone Gen X1 going above the Mod Wave? I think it might be. This is a vibe decision. I think it might be. I'm going to do it. It's my, it's my list. <laughs> you can't stop me. Uh, let's uh, okay, rearrange. No, there we go. Right. Okay, let's do the other stylophone now. So the other stylophone is the uh, Gen R8 here, which I have, haven't have featured on the channel a whole lot. And the reason for that is that it is a characterful synth. And characterful, in this case, is somewhat euphemistic because it has issues. The 
envelope or the VCA clicks at the start of notes because the oscillators don't reset. Now there's probably a good reason for the oscillators not resetting and there's a benefit to that as well. The sequencer is slightly broken. The legato mode doesn't work properly uh, as far as I'm concerned. Also the knobs are incredibly light and flimsy. The, I've never had a problem with them but they, they don't feel great. The uh, keybed, the sort of capacitive touch keybed, it's not the same stylus so you can play it with your fingers, you don't need a stylus, is also um, very easy to miss trigger notes. However, everything that I've just said about the Gen X one in terms of the instability, the noisiness, the weirdness applies to the Gen R8 as well. For drone sounds, it's absolutely glorious the distortion that's added on there as well that um, uh, you can have uh, quite complex interactions between the two oscillators that each oscillator's got their own subs which again can have issues with tracking which actually only adds to the flavor of it yeah it's a beautiful drone synth uh, you can also cross patch it with other things so i did a tram in january where i cross patched it with the mini brute 2s and it was just wonderful uh, for my tastes anyway just wonderful the way that the uh, the dirty dirty delay i was modulating the delay time with a square wave lfo and it was pinging all over the place and there was just this constant throbbing feedback that wasn't quite coming through a screaming resonance from the filter that came and went yeah it's another big vibe pick um, this is going to have to go above the other stylophone, I think, just because it has more features and it does sound better, actually. But I want to make it clear that this synth has issues, in my opinion, for, for other things. But, yeah, we're going to... You're going to have to do this. This is a weird B tier. Okay, what's next? Okay, I'm going to go with this one here, uh, which is the Soulsby at Megatron, which is a... A digital synth, an 8-bit digital synth that's, I guess, more geared towards chip tunes. It sounds brilliant in that world. For drone, maybe not so much. The interface is also a bit clicky and not so easy to make fine adjustments are, are on the go. Most of the parameters are, are on two rotary knobs, so it's sometimes not easy to quickly um, change things during a performance although they can be mapped to, to, to um, MIDI CC. So for drone and ambient, uh, I'm going to put it in the C tier. This is not to say that it's a bad synth for its intended purpose. Far from it, I think it's brilliant for, for chiptune stuff. And I've done a bunch of stuff uh, multi-tracking with it, and it just sounds great for that. Now, I am, however, going to follow up on that with this here. So you can load additional firmwares onto the app Megatron, and one of them is called the Oditron, which is an 8-bit emulation of the ARP Odyssey. I did a, a, a video demonstrating the whole firmware a little while ago, and I did use it um, in one of the jams during January as well. And this gets bumped to B tier for sure it's got all of the stuff from the odyssey that makes the odyssey good for sort of dirty evolving drones you have the ring mod between the two different uh, oscillators which you can then play duophonically which moves things around in really interesting ways you have the ability to send lfo to one of the ring modded oscillators but not the other you've got the different dirty uh, filter modes in there uh, and it actually makes for a really, really interesting sound with quite a lot of movement within itself. And like many things, you pair it with a delay or something and it becomes really, really cool. So the uh, Megatron goes in C tier, but the Auditron comes up into B tier because it just has a bit more vibe from that perspective. Okay, let's have another little shuffle here. Okay, uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's take a look at the Freaks now. Let's start with the Micro Freak. So I, I've been kind of thinking about doing this video for a, a little while, so I had some idea of, of where things were going. And the Micro Freak was going to go C tier for a long time. The fact that it's mono in terms of its, um, not in terms of the polyphony, but mono in terms of its um, output. It's a synth which sounds better with uh, effects for certain. 
And then I started thinking, well, actually, I'm missing a trick here because the, the playing surface actually is really quite inspiring in terms of having the polyphonic aftertouch. The sort of very, very tactile approach to playing actually you know, being able to lean into notes to make them bend and stuff like that. Actually, from a performance point of view, especially with like the noise engineering oscillators, CT is probably too low. So I was going, okay, probably probably somewhere in, in B tier for that. And then Altoria announced the sample and granular firmware upgrade for it. And that changed everything because being able to do that granular processing of certain types of samples for ambient music and for sort of fluttering incidental sounds within drones. Uh, paired with that playing surface, granted, probably need to add some effects to it, but I think Arturo just put this into A tier and I really wasn't expecting to say that, but that sample and granular mode that they've added is just such a huge huge deal so yeah <laughs> that's going into a tier it's probably not the top of, of a tier but it's definitely in a tier uh, so let's talk about the other freak as well and i'm a little bit torn here because i'm almost tempted to punish the mini freak for not having the sample playback and put it into b tier because I know how great that would be. <laughs> so out of spite, I might put this in B tier until Artoria port the sample playback to the to the Mini Freak. That's probably unfair. It might go below the, the, the Micro Freak though. Yeah, yeah, it's probably unfair. Okay, so obviously we have much of what is good about the Micro Freak in the Mini Freak in terms of its sound We've now got multiple oscillator types and you have the processing oscillator types as well. So I love putting something on the first oscillator and then using like the comb filter oscillator type on the second filter to process it and bring out these interesting resonances which ping and shoot out as you change other things about the first oscillator. It can be incredibly expressive despite lacking the polyphonic aftertouch. It does have the aftertouch which makes uh, a big difference. And then the effects are really, really good and add a lot to it. Especially the distortion effects sound especially good for, for drones and stuff. And you can make it do sort of pseudo physical modeling things. You can make it do very, very strong synthesized drones. It's one of the synths here, actually most of the synths that we've been talking about so far other than the Op6 have been strong mostly on the drone side of things and not necessarily on the ambient side of things, but this is definitely a synth which is strong on both. And when Artoria add the sample and granular functionality to the Mini Freak, then this will be S tier. The only thing that would, it'd be S tier, it'd probably be below the Op6 for me in terms of the flexibility of the synthesis and also we don't have panning per voice on the Mini Freak, which is like one of the only main limitations of its synthesis engine um, for me. Uh, I don't know whether it has stereo VCAs in it at all, so I don't know whether that's something that can be added in a firmware update or not. I suspect not, unfortunately. So maybe some effects which spread the sound around a bit more might be interesting to overcome that shortcoming. Yeah, it has to be, yeah, it has to be A tier, it can't be B tier. Um, uh, but it is going to go, it is going to go below the uh, micro freak until it gets uh, the sample playback and the granular stuff sorry sorry mini freak i love you it's you're, you're one of the best in class since in your price range but um you've just been outdone by your little cousin so yeah and that's on you try harder okay let's do a quick fire round of some uh, Volkers, shall we? Um, so let's start with the Volk Keys. Volk Keys does a lot of the things that the Minilog does that I like, but it is more limited. So it's going to have to go C tier, but above the App Megatron and probably above the, the Monolog too, actually. Um, so yeah, that's C tier, but high C tier. And I think it's uh, a bit of a sleeper hit in terms of the, the, the general vibe of it. Uh, let's do the... Okay, so I've got the Volker FM in twice because we've got the old version and the new version. The old version goes in C tier and then 
the uh, new version goes into B tier because it has the addition of the reverb, it has additional polyphony. Obviously FM is, is fantastic for both ambient and drone stuff, that goes without saying, but the original Worldcraft FM had its limitations, most of which, um, especially for the form factor, have been overcome in the new one, and also the new one has the cooler colour scheme, so that's B tier. The Volker drum. <sighs> B tier. Yes, I know it's a drum machine, but it also does all sorts of very, very interesting things in terms of its very limited but flexible synthesis and also the way that the delay and the um, physical modeling type stuff works on it as well is really, really interesting. And uh, I've certainly used it uh, as a melodic synth very successfully and I've, I, I like it there. Uh, Vulcan Modular. This is tricky. I think it's going C tier, but above the Volker FM and above the yeah, Megatron. I have a weird relationship with the Volker Modular because it feels like it's the Volker that I am meant to like the most in terms of my general tastes. But I've always struggled to get it to do what I want it to do without a lot of faff basically. And that's probably a me problem as much as anything else, but its tone especially tends to be quite aggressive. And although you can make it do quite sweet things, it very much sounds like it's doing wave folding and it's doing its particular thing. I kind of feel bad if I put it in C tier, but it's my list, so <laughs> it's where it's going. Okay, right, uh, onto the home straight a little bit, okay. Uh, okay. Now the OPZ is a teenage engineering product, so people are going to have strong feelings about this one way or another. <laughs> its sequencer is one of the best sequencers on any synth that I own. The step components way of doing things is amazing. I wish a lot of the functionality that it had was found on other synths a bit more. However, in terms of its playing interface, and the synthesis engine, and even really the way that you can mess with samples for ambient and drone. I've tried really hard to, like I was going to do, I plan to use it in January during when I was doing all the drones. And I've also tried to sit and do more ambient stuff with it in the past. And I feel like I should be able to do it. I feel like it should be suited to it, but there's something about the sound of it that's quite stark and I always really struggle to get that nuance and that movement and that sort of fuzziness to things that I like. So remember this is just for ambient and drone synths, don't get too mad at me in the comments. It's going in the C tier and it's not going above much. So don't hate me, don't hate me. Um, Oh, we should probably should have done the NTS one alongside the Falkers. It's going in C tier, but it's great as an effects processor. Playing Surface, it makes it very, very difficult to use. Yes, you could plug in an additional controller for certain, but you could say that about any of these synths that have a, a playing surface. You, know, you might get it more out of it with an additional controller. It can do a lot of things. Of course it can. And But I, in terms of actually using its program sounds even with some of the more um, powerful uh, synth engines it, it, menu diving constantly I don't really enjoy doing that side of things with it so yeah that's going down in C tier Zoya let's do Zoya before about a week ago this was going in B tier but they've just added the sample playback which is kind of huge in the same way that it is with the micro freak now does it get out of B tier because of that? Because the reality is that the playing surface is a bit clicky and not necessarily all that enjoyable to use in terms of setting things up or indeed performing with it. <sighs> hmm. I've done some nice drone stuff with it and sort of generative things it's really, really good at. I can't, I can't put it in the same place as the freaks, can I? No. Okay. So that's still that's still B tier, but it's it's higher B tier than, than it was previously. So let's move some stuff around. Make it go higher. Okay. Okay, what's next? 
Let's do the wingy, one of the more esoteric entries on the list here. So the wingy is a stereo resonator device. It's kind of like having two lots of rings modules in a little box with an external microphone on it, sort of like that. It's very much designed for kind of ambient stuff and especially um, taking it out into an environment and allowing the resonators to resonate within that environment. So I, it should go A tier because of what it's made for, but oh, I don't know, I don't know. I can't, again, I can't, it, the, 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 the freaks of the gatekeepers here, I can't put it in the same tier, I don't think. Or can I? So Wingy works better with something else, I think is the reality. On its own, it can be a little bit stark. The tonality of the resonators can be a bit overpowering in my experience. And when you pair it with other things, that's when it comes to life. So one thing that I've used it for is um, adding stereo movement and stereo width to things that are monophonic, like the Lyra 8. Running the Lyra 8 through the wingy allows you to spread out the sounds by way of having things resonate with different notes on different parts of the stereo spread. But on its own, and I think we have to judge it on its own, it's going B tier. But with other stuff A tier. But B tier on its own. Right, let's do another one with some uh, level of controversy with it. So let's do a Behringer product. Let's do the DeepMind 6. So this is a, a slight cheat. I don't own my DeepMind anymore. I sold it a couple of weeks ago. There's nothing wrong with the DeepMind. I think it's a good synth, but yeah, it was time for it to move on. I use it a lot for ambient and drone. I use it a lot for generative sounds and generative music, and it does really well there. One downside of the DeepMind, I think probably from my perspective, is that you have to work quite hard to make it not sound like itself sometimes. It has quite a distinct character to the oscillators, especially the square wave oscillators, that wasn't always totally pleasing and you kind of had to bring the filter down a long way to make that disappear in some cases for softer sounds. There's also no real modulation or cross-modulation between the two different oscillators, which reduces the power there a little bit. That said, it has a really good mod matrix. It has very flexible LFOs and envelopes in the same way that the mod wave does, actually. The mod wave reminded me a lot of a deep bind in a good way when I, when I got the mod wave. So being able to re-trigger the envelopes in different ways, having modulatable control over the LFO speed, all that kind of stuff allows you to do really interesting generative stuff. But you do have to work hard with the sound of it. The effects also are a mixed bunch. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so much. I really like the Sansamp emulation in there for the distortion, and I use that a lot for dirtier sounds. It also has aftertouch on the keybed, which is nice. The keybed isn't the best, but it's certainly not the worst um, by any stretch of the imagination. So I think, to be fair, um, it's going to have to go in A tier. It's not going to go above the freaks, but just by virtue of what I used it for and how much I used it, you know, can't really argue with it going in the A tier, I don't think. So leaving aside this uh, breaking continuity, don't worry about that, um, I think it's probably time to talk about... Uh, kind of a wild card entry in a way, which is uh, my Eurorack setup, uh, which is represented by this little cat chappy here, who you'll be familiar with if you've uh, got Eurorack yourself, I'm sure. So my rack originally was set up specifically to do this kind of drone and ambient music. And like all <laughs> modular systems, it is an unsolved problem. It's uh, not a finished product. It's very much a work in progress. I think there are a bunch of modules that I've added to the rack, which is twice the size, or over twice the size it was ever really meant to be, that have really enhanced what I can do in terms of the drone side of things. So uh, some of the Bastel modules, which are very aggressive um, in some ways, but are kind of designed to bring together multiple signals and have them move about. They've really helped things out. But I think at the moment, as I have learnt more about what I want to do in modular, actually, I've really come to realise that there is some work to be done in order to perfect what I'm, I'm trying to do. And at the moment, I'm not even entirely sure what I need to change. I think a lot of it is down to sound sources and also effects. So 
both sides. Um, the kind of uh, processing and filtering and wave folding and distorting kind of stuff I'm happy with, but there's something lacking with the range of sound sources I've got and also the effects. So I can't put this in the S tier. I think it's A tier. I think I'll just be more critical because it's something that I've designed more. Um, but it's right bottom of A tier, as I say, there's work to be done. It should be S tier because it's what it's meant to do, but um, we're not quite there yet. So I'm going to go away and reflect on the fact that I can't put my specially designed modular system in S tier for this kind of music yet. Uh, what next? What next? Okay, uh, yeah, so um, the Norand Mono. Now, my gut instinct when I was uh, listing out the synths that I was going to put in this list was that this is probably C tier because, you know, it's kind of got that 303 kind of vibe from a distance. But actually, that's entirely wrong because it has two oscillators. Those two oscillators can interact with each other in very interactive ways through through zero FM so we can get lots of interesting movement going in on there and there is an LFO and essentially a, a, an envelope per knob of control on this synth which means in terms of getting movement into a sound it's probably the most sort of proficient uh, synth out of the lot and you've also got the ability to overdrive the VCAs to get more character into the sound so it's probably not going to win any prizes for ambient, necessarily. Although it can get quite nice plinky sounds. But actually what you can do in terms of getting drones out of it, evolving drones that move about, the fact that you can um, modulate things at audio rates to get extra grit in, the fact that you can uh, independently sequence the envelope per knob functionality as well independently to the notes that are being played in the new firmware there's duophonic as well i think this might actually be a bit of a sleeper hit i don't think it goes into a tier for this stuff but it's an easy b tier if the stylophones and the um, mini brute can be in here then certainly this can as well it's probably further up than that so we'll just move some of these down perhaps um yeah so somewhere somewhere yeah, somewhere around there. Oh no, that's too low. Anyway, uh, the order here isn't that important. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's actually a bit of a sleeper hit for doing drone stuff. Not necessarily for ambient stuff, but for getting big characterful drones. Um, yes. Or well, we're getting getting towards the end here. I think people will probably guess what these four are going to do. So let's let's do the play. So the play's an interesting one because on paper, in terms of its feature set, it comes in very similar to the Digitact, which may well be getting ranked pretty high. And I recently did a video exploring how you can make use of the Play's um, algorithmic and generative functionality to create really interesting, evolving um, sequences, especially when it comes to sort of ambient movement and ambient um, harmonies. And it, it does do that very, very well. And I want to put it high, but the th thing that is holding me back from putting it as high as I might do otherwise is that although the sequencing is incredibly proficient at doing this kind of generative stuff, um, when it comes to the sound design side of things, it is somewhat limited in what you can do to the individual samples. It's very much an instrument where you prepare samples first rather than interact with them and manipulate them once they're on the device. It also lacks the ability to do open looping infinite samples, which for the kind of stuff that I do, again, is somewhat limiting. So in terms of what it can do with the generative patterns on the sequences, it scores highly but for me for ambient stuff and especially for drone stuff the less fully featured sound engine lets it down so it's not c tier um, by any means uh, but it's in b tier and it's not necessarily that high up i think yeah probably above some of these here but um 
yeah somewhere around there somewhere around the middle of b tier if it had more sound design functionality then it would be high uh, plain and simple if we had some lfos and some envelopes to play with you can't even envelope the filter for example on the play which is you know a, a, quite a, a limitation potentially right <laughs> on to uh, the electron boys so which one should we go for first uh let's go for the let's go for the digger it's one i've had the longest so digger um you have probably already guessed if you've seen anything on my channel that's uh easy into uh the s tier it's just a wonderful synthesis engine that is able to do sweet things and bright things and dark and doomy things paired with an incredibly powerful sequencer and a bunch of um, ways to modulate the sound potentially on a per step basis it's multi timbral which makes a, a, a big difference when you're trying to layer up sounds and it's a, a joy to to use and to create things with it's especially adept i think personally for me um, the way I use it anyway at uh, doing drone stuff, the way that FM synthesis can create sounds which constantly move and evolve is so compelling when it comes to drones. Yeah, and as I say, pairing it with that really, really fantastic sequencer, which can run very slowly and do evolving things with chance so that you have drones and uh, ambient sequences which are constantly evolving and rolling over each other and never quite repeat the same way but still have some repetitive uh, aspects to them to ground them in a musical way yeah it's a fantastic synth it is arguably my desert island synth for anything not just for ambient and drone actually for anything uh, but it does have some stiff competition from its cousins here so again let's do uh, dig attacked next uh, so that's again uh, straight into S tier all day long especially with the new um, firmware update which allows you to stretch and manipulate samples in whole new ways now that they've introduced the different machines so a lot of what I said about the Digitone also applies to the dig attack in terms of the, of the way that its sequencer works but the way that I will often use the dig attack especially when it's been used solo, is to use it as a kind of uh, sequenceable tape machine running multiple loops, which I can mix live using the mixer page and have those loops be doing different things based upon the sequences on top of the actual loops looping, if that makes sense. So having the sequencer set it so that every now and again the loop reverses or goes forwards or goes to double time or changes its filter or you know any number of different things also with all of the various distortion down sampling bit crushing the ways that the filters can resonate really strongly to the point that they will ping um, there's so much that you can do with the um, sound design and manipulation of the samples once you um, have them in there now that we have two LFOs which again was something that was added in a firmware update you can push and pull those samples even more is it better than the Digitone? Mm. god that's really really difficult it, mm. <laughs> I have to admit that although the Digitone is my desert island synth I probably on a day-to-day -day basis gravitate towards using the dig attack more often does that mean it's better it might do oh i don't know yeah okay i'll commit to it i'll say i'll, I'll put the dig attack higher um is the dig attack higher than the op six <sighs> yes we'll try that order i might change that Let's grab the Syntact while we're in here as well. So the Syntact, uh, ostensibly, um, is kind of a drum machine synth, but it's also one of my absolute favourite synths for drone. I mean, that's not a joke. It, it really, really is. Again, all of the things we can say about the sequencer also applies to the Syntact, but what the Syntact has, especially when it comes to drone, is that beautiful, beautiful master drive which rattles and howls and introduces intermodulation between the different synth sounds. And you pair that with the, the gritty and characterful uh, analog 
uh, oscillators which can do a ring mod again move, creating more movement amongst the sound and then you have various levels of fizz and ping and uh, rattle and uh, digital noise happening at, across all of the digital oscillators as well and I actually end up using the syntax almost more the way that I use the digger tag. so with the digger tone it's all about uh, sequencing things and putting together compositions generative or, or otherwise but with the um, the syntax and the digger tact it's about setting things going and then doing live mixing and it's less about having a predefined sequence and more what happens in the moment it's a wonderful machine for drone yeah just just wonderful and of course you can use it for for all the other stuff that it's good at which goes for the other electron boxes as well now where does it go in this list oh god okay it's going to go in third place here because these other two are better for ambient than it is but for heavy heavy drone if this was just a drone the syntax would probably be at the top honestly people keep asking me in the comments of my how i drone on the digger tone and how i drone on the syntax video so okay well which one do you like more i guess i've just answered that question but um I, as i say i use them very differently despite the fact that they're of, the, of their similarities i'll commit to saying that for drone and specifically for drone the syntax is better than the digger tone but for all round ambient and drone the digger tone wins okay there we go you've got your answer which brings us to our last synth here and the newest one in terms of my ownership which is the soma lyra 8 this again is probably no surprise to anyone but that's going straight into the s tier and it's going oh wow uh... <laughs> uh, is this is that right I think that's right yeah it's going right near the top of the S tier of, I mean of course it is and, and the funny thing about the Lyra 8 is that on paper feature for feature it's outclassed by so many other synths on this list if you just look at the the feature list it's got eight analog voices it's got um two lfos which are shared between the voices uh, it hasn't got independent envelopes um it's got a distortion circuit it's got a delay circuit it's got two delay circuits you can't modify the timbre of the different voices manually there's so much about it on paper which seems like it's a lesser device and yet it's just one of the most inspiring instruments that i own it has a primitive sound to it and i mean that in the most positive way possible it feels to me like it it's it's some kind of alternate history birth of electronic music it feels like it's coming from the past it's primordial it's throbbing it's raw and it's dangerous sounding and i just love it every time i go to use it it's so limited and yet so expressive but then many many instruments are very very limited you know a, a violin is you know actually a very limited instrument compared to say the op6 in terms of the types of sounds it can do and yet it can be just one of the most beautiful um, instruments and can be so inspiring for those that play it and the lyra 8 does that as well the, when i said that vibes was going to be a big part of this this is a big vibe pick for me because it just comes down to what it's like to use and the raw sound that comes out of it you know sometimes the sounds that come out of this synth make me feel 
um, more emotional than any other synth that I own. And it's just something to do with that primitive rawness. And yet it gets beaten by the dig attack, by the looks of it. I think I stand by that as well. I don't think I can... I don't think that there's another instrument I gravitate more to than the dig attack. So I guess that's it. Um, so anything that needs to be bumped A tier? I don't think so. I think I am happy with that. Well, thank you for uh, hanging out, um, if you have indeed hung out uh, for this slightly different kind of video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then please do let me know in the uh, comments if you want to see more sort of talky, less technical videos on the channel, because you know, anything I can do that is different is going to reduce the likelihood of burnout, basically, when it comes down to it. Um, so um, if you want more sort of chatty, more about the creativity, less in-depth and technical videos, then yeah, uh, let me know in the comments. And of course, please let me know in the comments what I've got wrong here and um, what you would vote highest out of this lot or indeed out of the synths that you own. But I think that's it. Uh, so as always, um, a, a, a like and a subscribe is massively appreciated. And uh, other than that, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.